Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be looking at Sonic the Hedgehog, the heroic blue speeder from the eponymous video game series. While the appearance of this character has been mostly steady across its history, it still presents a very interesting challenge by fact of being a hedgehog, an animal Sonic resembles almost as much as I do, both in its appearance and amazing set of skills, so it should be really fun to take a look at it and see what it would be like as a real living creature. And, as always, here goes a thank you to everyone who wanted to see this episode, and to our patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. If you too are enjoying these videos, please consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing, or joining our Patreon to get early looks at all our creatures. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Our world is filled with creatures that fill all sorts of ecological niches. And, thanks to the amazing thing that is evolution, Many creatures will evolve into forms with very little resemblance to even their closest living relatives. While the creatures we will meet today are nowhere close to being the most dramatic examples of this, even among the ones we currently have on our files, Celuradorsum velox is, nonetheless, a very exciting example of how much species can change over time. These hedgehogs if you pardon them being named after their closest relative commonly known by mankind, first evolved on the island of Mobius, a place with vast plains and where no large predatory reptiles or mammals existed. As a result of this lack of bigger predators, the ancestors of this animal quickly began growing in size as they adapted to filling the role of those predators, hunting bigger and faster prey including small mammals and reptiles, as opposed to the invertebrate-only diet of their smaller cousins. In order for them to catch and kill this prey, these hedgehogs developed a much different body type, selected for greater size as well as longer and much stronger limbs that allowed them to move at high speeds with ease. As they evolved to hunt prey that grew ever faster, these hedgehogs gained a much more flexible spine. They also developed a longer and heavier tail that also acts as a counterweight, allowing these hedgehogs to turn quickly and take advantage of their quick reflexes when running. These hedgehogs have also developed bigger, forward-facing eyes, along with a shorter muscle and flatter face that allows them better binocular vision converging on a form similar to cheetahs. However, unlike cheetahs, and similar to other running species such as horses and humans, the sonic hedgehogs have evolved sweat glands, which help cool their bodies as they run, allowing them to keep their high speeds for much longer distances and therefore catching up to prey that has become even faster in order to escape these new predators. Still, they do need to rest a lot after a hard day running after prey, and will need to sleep well to digest what they have eaten and conserve energy for their next day. Yes, day. Unlike other hedgehogs, the sonic hedgehogs are diurnal as a result of the highly energetic cost of their hunting style, as being diurnal has been proven to help animals conserve energy. However, in the process of becoming much heavier and muscular running animals, they have become much less adept at swimming compared to other hedgehogs. While they can still swim, they are not as good at it as other large animals, and they will avoid water for the most part. Due to this new lifestyle, baby sonic hedgehogs take quite longer to mature compared to their cousins and will stay with their mothers for close to a year and a half, the amount of time it takes for their strong legs to develop enough for them to run, and even hunt by themselves. Furthermore, the quills of these young hedgehogs are not fully formed yet, 
forcing them to depend on their parents for protection against other predators, including other members of their species. Once the sonic hedgehogs have finally grown, their quills will be hard enough to afford them said protection. While the quills of these animals are not the powerful defense of other hedgehogs, they still provide a small degree of armor to these animals, if only by virtue of being hardened for, and can be moved by the hedgehog for different purposes. When running, they will stand at a backward-facing position that gives these hedgehogs a more aerodynamic surface, which makes them more stable also forming an interwoven mesh that provides them protection against impacts they may suffer when hunting. Furthermore, when fighting off other members of their own species, whether it is for mates or territory, the sonic hedgehogs will make their quills stand on end, displaying their amazing coloration to their opponents. The quills of these animals, while light brown in color, present pockets of air that scatter the light that hits them, giving their fur a blue shine, a similar phenomenon to that observed in blue jays. If this threatening display fails, the hedgehogs will ram each other with their bodies, using their speed to outmaneuver their opponent and strike at them with their quills until either is forced to leave. Should a sonic hedgehog be cornered or trapped by another creature, Leaving it unable to take advantage of its notorious speed, it will then resort to using its strong limbs and sharp claws to fight off any potential attackers. The fascinating process of these small insectivores evolving into huge running predators has led to quite a bit of research in order to try to figure out how this happened. But, as fascinating as these creatures are, some people have taken the study of these animals too far, including a particular case when a member of our own staff was found to be experimenting on ways to artificially imitate these adaptations on regular hedgehogs. Of course, the nature of these experiments is heavily frowned upon by our research center, and Dr. Ivo Robotnik is no longer allowed in our facilities. And that's it for a speculative biology look into Sonic the Hedgehog. And this one might have been one of the greatest challenges we've faced, if only from the anatomical side of it. I did my best to give this creature an appearance that fit a hedgehog, a fast animal, and the anatomy of Sonic himself. This was a particularly fun challenge, since, despite canonically being a hedgehog, the differences between this video game character and the small insectivores can be quite noticeable, including, but not limited, to pretty much the entire thing. The end result is mostly based on what a running predator animal looks like. Of course, by tweaking the conditions around it to allow for such a development to occur. Luckily enough, this body plan presents a lot of characteristics that are seen in Sonic, such as his long limbs and distinct eye and snout shape, which really helped bridge the gap between the Sonic and the Hedgehog. The rest of the process was adapting as much as I could of the rest of Sonic's characteristics, mainly its noticeably long and curved quills, more similar to those of a porcupine, and bright blue in color to boot. Even with all that, I did have to tweak the design a few times, as I tried to decide how much of this animal should reflect the anatomy of Sonic himself. Another idea I had even involved this creature having an almost theropod-like build, which was much more similar to Sonic in certain aspects and quite different in others. However, eventually I decided to use this design more similar to other running mammalian predators. And in the end, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode too. A few comments in the past have asked to see different characters from the Sonic franchise. So please tell us which you'd like to see in the comments below, as well as any other type of creature you would like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show. Thank you all for watching. 
and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.